Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Zach Mandeville, and I'm going to be going uh, over a project that I've been working on called Song Islands. And it's, this is really pleasant for me. Mix is a good friend of mine. Um, but also, the reason why I got into coding was because of Scuttlebutt. Uh, and so there's like a nice, happy little resonance of being able to show one of my uh, first proud coding projects on the same time as presentation of Scuttlebutt. Feels good. Um, and we got an EP set together. So it's just a great evening. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be talking about Song Islands, but I also wanted to talk about sort of the um, reasons why you would make a, a P2P app and what it's like um, to create in that space. And so um, I only know my own, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, this is my site. And uh, I probably, I got into coding probably very much like the rest of you. Um, I was a barber and a zine maker in a tiny college town nestled in a pine forest. And then uh, during a very intense Saturn return, uh, I decided to change everything in my life and take up stand-up comedy. Uh, then fell in with a experimental comedy collective and we all moved together from Washington State to New York City where I did comedy in New York for a while and then got kind of gently radicalized into tech autonomy and tech anarchism after attending a pancake brunch that happened to be run by a queer hacker collective that was teaching pen testing. And uh, so I really like pancakes and it turned out I really like pen testing and uh, got super to that. And then through the path of uh, all of that and learning more about tech autonomy, stumbled upon Scuttlebutt, really loved all the people there and decided uh, to move myself and my wife to New Zealand so we could start coding. So, yeah, uh, probably real familiar. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but really I, I think the, the, the connecting part of it is uh, that even though my, my path was, was maybe different, um, it is one where I started out non-technical uh, but then found in code this new way of expressing myself, this new art in which I could express myself that I found very, very at home and very, very rich in a way that I didn't before. And I got hooked on it and wanted to keep going. And that was one thing that uh, when people first started talking about, or when I first started talking to people about code, um, they often say, yeah, coding is an art. And they'll say coding is like writing, and they'll reference it similar to like a poem. Right? And I think it's, this is uh, Walt Whitman as a uh, simple JavaScript function. Uh, and it works. It's, I think it has the same amount of power. I think it's, I think it's equal. No, but um, I think it's often that you know, people compare it to poetry probably because it looks like stanzas and that maybe there's an elegance and, and such. Uh, that is not the case for me. Um, it might just be because I'm, I'm clumsy, but uh, a lot of my code, it does feel like writing but it feels closer to like the messy uh, notes for a fantasy sci-fi novel. You know, like it feels closer to just a really like excited drawing of like a dwarven pneumatic hammer and all the stats that I've written to the side saying like what mountain, all the minerals that made its hilt come from and like a made up quote from a made up book about the proper way to wield it. Like that is often what the, the writing feels like. And the reason why is because when you're making a P2P app, you're making something for a better future. Like you're, you're writing something for a future that is not here yet, necessarily. But you can imagine a difference and you can imagine an alternative and so you're wanting to start to build towards that. And so the thing that you're building is inherently fantasy. But it's a fantasy that you can realize a little bit closer each day and that is getting people a little bit closer each day. So, my fantasy is one called Song Islands. Uh, it's not, the fantasy is one where um, artists get supported and where you can be an artist online and not have it be a mental health risk. Uh, it's where communities can support each other and where you can make um, something that can actually revitalize, or not revitalize, but um, make stronger local scenes and regional dialects and regional scenes and uh, just have something fun and to provide a new way to, to flirt with one another. Uh, that's the big hope. Um, said another way, this is, Song Islands is kind of like um, a magical silver rope 
that I'm using to just lasso artifacts off the dark side of the moon and tug to the shore closer to me, all about some brighter tomorrow that I'm trying to see. Uh, and it's written in JavaScript, and uh, it's available now. But the spot where it is available is, oh, and also it looks like this. You can hear very tiny music playing. It's just a song player. It's a way of having a song and some words about the song and some art that makes you think about the song or that the song makes you think about this art, some links about where to learn more, and some links about yourself. So it's real, real humble uh, and simple, but there's, it has the potential of doing quite a bit. Potentially, hopefully, we'll see. Uh, I should say, though, that this is not one that fits any current market. Um, there's no real, like, there's many things that I could do to make it more um, mass adoptable or whatever, fit current trends and such. But again, it's not for the current. It's for the future. Um, so there's many, many things that are weird about it, but the, the weird is intentional. Uh, so all of this uh, is built for a new browser called the Beaker Browser. And I don't know, are, is anyone familiar with Beaker Browser? See, So Mix is familiar. Um, Beaker is kind of the twin sister of Scuttlebutt. Um, there's a lot of the shared developers and shared people on it. Uh, you are looking at it right now. It works as a normal browser. Uh, you can, or you can visit like any web page for it. But it also works for these DAT pages. And so DAT is a new type of protocol uh, that it allows your computer or yourself to act as a server for everyone else. So it's kind of, um, you're sharing sites and sharing files similar to like BitTorrent or Git. And so instead of having to upload your site onto a server, you can host it directly from your computer. Then if someone likes it, either while they're visiting it or they choose to intentionally do this, that you can seed the site. So the more people that are visiting a site, the more seeds it has, the more readily available it is. So the entire community is acting as the network in which the, the site is being hosted. Uh, it also is uh, dealt with with hashes. So this is a nice short URL you can make for it, but most DAT sites are a long hash. And so it's a very specific, uh, you are, when you're requesting a site, you're not requesting the location in which it lives. You're requesting the art, the object itself, and then finding the people who know it and are hosting it and grabbing it to you. And so everything has like a pure object authorial intent to it, I guess. Like there's something about it where when you make something, you know that you have this thing and it lives with you and, you and everyone around you, but it doesn't need to use anyone else or any middle person. It can be entirely who you want to share it with. Uh, so it's built. What we're seeing here is the Beaker browser. Beaker is meant to serve DATs, and it uses a lot of the nice features into the browser itself. And I'll go ahead and show you. This is where you can download it, at beakerbrowser.com. Uh, so a couple things that make this special, beyond just being able to view the DAT site, is if I like this site, I can View the source of it. I'm going to sit down now to try to actually hit these. I think I got it. Thank you. So you can view the source of any site, and it opens something close to uh, like a, a GitHub repo. So instead of it just being a pure text, you're able to navigate around, see the readme that people have left, navigate through it and such, and all of that. But another really nice thing is if you really, really like the thing, really, really like the site you see, you can make an editable copy. Fun. <laughs> so now this is mine. Uh, it's all the same files as before, but now I can write to them. So not only is this a way to browse sites, but within the browser itself, it's a way to start writing sites. Um, this incredible site here, I'm not wanting to toot my own horn with this, I hand-coded that, that's pure HTML. Uh, 
it started in the Beaker browser, and it was it was coded in the Beaker browser because the Beaker browser is an editor itself, uh, which you can also see by just going ahead and say, create new site, make a new website, find new, and now you have a new website that you can then share with your friends and and whoever else. So you have this immediacy to having an idea and then creating the idea, which is incredible. But also for the supporters, like if you have a friend who has an incredible idea and they share it with you, you have a direct way of supporting them. You can seed the, the file. You can hit the little three here and decide to seed it. So you have it like you are hosting that with them. And so when I got introduced to Beaker, I got really, really excited about this um, because it reminded me of where I came from. It reminded me of zines. Um, the, do you all know what zines are? Cool. So yeah, the, the, the concept of self-published books, self-published writing of any sort, where no one is telling you what it's supposed to be, and you have your own methods of sharing it with folks. And any zine holds the instructions on how to make another zine. Like you can just open it, see that as four pieces of paper and a staple, and if you're inspired by that as well, you now know how to make one. In the same way, you have this step from viewing a site and liking the site to editing it to make it your own. And I got really excited because whenever you have new technology, you have the possibility of a new medium. That the technology does not need to just represent or recreate what, what happened before, right? Like, if we only, like, we, now that we have video cameras, right? Like, or when, when film first came out, it would be really, really kind of depressing and boring if all the movies were just shots of people turning pages of a book, right? Like, you want to do something different. And so I got excited about using Beaker not to make classic web pages or make something that, like a platform that looks exactly the same as before. I wanted to do something different. And there was a design style that was starting with, with Beaker that was really interesting, where essentially you're building tools as sites. So any site you can enjoy as an art object or as whatever it is, but it also, because of this editable quality and its, its copyable quality, it means that it holds in itself everything you need to make your own. So people were creating single page medium posts, creators, or, or what have you. Or in my case, I was making dat zines, so they'd be just different types of zines, like different uh, sites that within them had like an edit where you can just write in the little text editor and make it your own. And from that zines, it got back to Song Islands, which we'll see a few. So when I enter one, you have that incredible music. Uh, and then you can make a copy. And we're going to call this my Fun Song Island. And right now it's the same, but now there's a magic pencil that appeared that didn't appear before, because I'm the owner of the, the site. And so Beaker knows the difference, knows when you are the, the creator of this hash, essentially. So now I can go to the edit page and change the song around. Um, I'm using my wife's computer, so I don't know where she keeps her music, so I won't show that, but trust, it works. It's incredible. Um, I can change all the words. Usually some fun stretch of words. Incredible. Uh, change the picture around. And with just a couple of, uh, I'll keep the same picture, but maybe I want a different background. And I want that lavender sprig as big as possible. And I'll change the gradient around and make the primary color a little bit different. Ooh. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, and also, this is really important. I'll move from the alien theme to the cat theme. Uh, I can also add in some links for the people who made the picture that you see, uh, who wrote the song that you see. Maybe it's yourself, and you just want to post it to your own band camp. Maybe it's you're making a like MP3 zine and you're wanting to, to post the, the bands you like, sites, and such. And then lastly, there is a concept of a distro. 
Um, so within zines, uh, zines are shared among once one another through distros, distributions, uh, which is the kind of really important part, that it's not just about making art in a different way, but having a different network in which to share that art. It, it allows for completely different voices and completely different scenes than usual. And what we have in music now is it's incredibly easy to make music with free software on, on whatever, but as soon as you're trying to share it with anyone, you're using the exact same tools as the biggest stars. And those tools, when used by uh, smaller or independent artists or whatever, are super depressing. Um, I have a friend who just released an incredible album, and he was showing me on Spotify, whenever he goes to it, Spotify forces him to look at the analytics of his album, <laughs> and it just says less than a thousand listens. And like, even the bands that he likes, like he's showing me, he's like, well, if you get enough or whatever, and he showed one, um, this uh, Tycho, and Tycho like had a popularity bar that was like less than half. And it was just this weird thing where the entire room was like, oh yeah, I know that band. And then we look, it's like, no, I guess, still not popular enough according to like this weird metric but it's a metric built around how a database works and like what code functions can do and not how a community functions or how people want to want to talk to one another uh distros are different you write a a file you write a little piece of paper on an envelope that you send someone that piece of paper says this is who i am this is how i like this thing shared this is how much it should cost and so on you have this nice exchange in which the people themselves are deciding how it should be distributed and how it should be shared. And so that works here as well. And I hit save. Happy cat, not happy alien. And now it's a slightly different site. Uh, <laughs> but you could do some really incredible things. So if we go back into the source for this, uh, this is, this is a little extreme. Um, every part of this is homemade or whatever. Uh, I'm using a JavaScript framework for it, but uh, the lavender is an SVG uh, drawn by my wife. The song that you're hearing was coded by me, and so I included the, if you want to paste it into your own Sonic Pi player, you can edit the song and make your own theme. But also, the way that this all of this works is that there is a zine folder and inside the zine folder there is a text file that explains the contents of this and similarly there is a distro file that explains how it should be shared uh, so I have a little interface in which you can use it but someone could also create a site entirely of their own uh, coded however they want and as long as it has the same two text files, as long as it has the same sort of agreement, you can start to collect them and aggregate them into all these cool ways. Uh, which is what I've been working on lately, is an archipelago. So if you have a number of islands, they make an archipelago. Um, I don't know geologically what comes after that, and so <laughs> that's, been a, that's been trouble for me, uh, for the naming. But uh, yeah, an archipelago is just a intentional collection of song islands, uh, or a mixtape, or an album, uh, it's however you want, but song islands are this mixture of art and words and music, and so it's not any of those, right? It's also a full zine that could be about your local scene that maybe is five songs and five interviews, it's whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm just collecting the song islands that my friends have made since I've introduced it. So it's essentially the same. Uh, a lot of the what I make is like something that'd be good to zone out to um, or like disassociate to or whatever. So um, when you're feeling bummed and want to just stare at a screen for a while, I want it to be a nice screen. Uh, so there isn't any pop-ups unless you ask for them, but you, you get a nice little image. This is a long song. Let's go all the way to the... And this is where I see if it all works. Hey, so this is a different, this is someone else's. Um, and so all the art and stuff has changed. This is my friend, Alex. This is that same song again. 
Uh, this is one that, so I shared it on Scuttlebutt and the people started sharing songs back. And so this is an original song that uh, a person named Dan made uh, with some nice uh, Scott Pilgrim art. And if you click on track list, you can see all the various tracks that are being used and edit them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the way that this works is really, really simple. Let me go ahead and find one of the handy tabs I had open. And this is all breaking because I just wanted to play a very specific song. Hey, cool. So here's one called Peanut Butter Jelly Time. And I can grab it and go back to my song Archipelago, hit Add New Island, go back and choose a different track where they had a different nicer gradient. Um, I can't control what changes. Sometimes people make it real transparent and it's hard. But here we go. Throw in the dat hash. It grabs the text file and grabs what the title is. I say, yep, that is right. I say, I love Laura less at an island. Scroll down. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, this is now a finished archipelago, I guess, that will just, I could have this playing 10 times in a row if I wanted to, if that was the archipelago I wanted to make. I'm going to politely pause it now. Um, <laughs> uh, meet me after if you want to listen to the entire song. I'll just, I'll have the computer going. We can. <laughs> uh, but the, the important thing um, for this, I guess, is that uh, um, we now have six or seven people who, had, who have written or shared a song and an archipelago that is also sharing that collection of songs and we have not yet used a business and we have not yet used a platform and even if I get very tired or whatever and I'm just staring at a wall for a while, this will continue to live on because it's just words. It's just code that people are using. It's a method that you can use instead of a, of a platform that you have to rely on. Um, it also means because this is just being shared to like from dad hash to dad hash, you can have computers that are hosting it all the time, but for a lot of it, it's just gonna be your friends are choosing to host it, which means you can have separate networks from the rest of the internet. You can have a set of Song Islands that is, is really just shared among you and your 10 friends and start to build a scene that truly does not exist anywhere else and something that it lasts for your, for your, your region or your community and that's what it's important for. So that really is the, um, I intentionally don't have any big plans, like big money or life plans with this um, outside of Hopefully there are people that I don't know who are using this to make a mash note that they give to someone, or if they make a mixtape out of archipelagos to give to someone and it includes nothing but their local music and I never hear about it. That sounds really, really lovely to me. Um, and it's what I dream about as I code it and that feels really, really good. And I didn't know the like ending I was gonna give for, for this talk. I didn't really have a way to conclude it. Something about like hope and dreams or what matters and such. Um, but this morning I got an email from someone um, who found my site uh, and wanted to reach out to me to tell me that they picked up the zine off their shelf that I gave them 10 years ago. And so they finally read Fun of Our Awesome 3 and they're sorry that it took them so long, but <laughs> they wanted to let me know that they really liked it and were gonna give it to a friend. Um, so 10 years ago when I gave it to them, I was kind of hoping for a quicker response, <laughs> but <laughs> the positive feeling of that response did not waver. Like it still felt really, really good to get that email even after all that time passed. Um, you don't know the effect that you're gonna have, you don't know where it's gonna go, but if you make it resilient and make it lasting and making good, then it will have an impact throughout time. That's a sci-fi concept, much like P2P, it all wraps up. Thank you.